Hello YouTube, this is Crane Productions 27 here with another update video. Now, you may have noticed that I didn't actually upload any videos in the past seven weeks. Now there is a reason for that, as I'm now about to explain. This all starts back in January. Um, my mum told me when I was at my nanny's place, her mum's, that she had to go to hospital to have some checks done because her skin had started to turn yellow and this resulted in her being in hospital for three weeks. Um, because mum went in on the Thursday, on the first Thursday of February, um, they couldn't really do anything until the Monday. So me, my brother and my sister and my stepdad have been going to see mum during that time. Um, and then there's, well, brace yourselves. On the 8th of February, my mum was told this sad news. And on the 10th of February, she told us, as well as our stepdad, that mum had a cancerous growth in her liver and that she was diagnosed with liver cancer so she had so um they tried to put the stent in twice but unfortunately it didn't work it just wouldn't go in so when i tried well not when i tried um i tr i couldn't quite understand what was going on and why it wouldn't go in and I said why couldn't they just do a, a liver transplant and uh, Paul my stepdad said it was unlikely and the wait and the list would have been long and who would have been able to who would want to give up their liver and this had this all had all of us in tears because the doctor said they weren't sure how long mum was going to have we honestly didn't know ourselves so all we could do was just try and be brave and make sure the last of our mum's days and the last part of her life was was a happy one so we've been seeing our mum throughout the three weeks she was in hospital in February and we've been trying to make her happy we brought her presents we brought her our word books we brought a little elephant toys because our mum was, our mum was a fan of elephants and um, what they did was um the hospital um did it put a drain in on mum's liver so they so whatever was in the liver they could get it out and that would help them put the stent in but then like i said to you the stent wouldn't go in and then the day came when one day in hospital when mum was told by the was, to, was told by a member of staff um, in the hospital that they couldn't look to give him our mum any further treatment. So that was it. My sister was in tears a lot, and so was my brother, and so was I. On the day. When we were told Mum had liver cancer, on that night, I struggled to get to sleep because I cried about three times that day, and the third time was during the evening when I was trying to get to sleep. And then when my Mum came home, um, unfortunately she was restricted to the, to her bedroom. She couldn't go out anywhere. She wasn't because the more. The, the longer the, the liver cancer in her liver was growing and that was going to cause some bad effect on, on mum's body and she wasn't going to be able to do all the things she loved doing. The saddest part was we weren't going to be able to take our mum out to do anything. The only time when our mum got to go out was when she went to go and see her dad at the cemetery so throughout the rest of the time 
Um, I've been going to see my mum on days when I'm not working and at times when I finish work. And then one day in March, mum had to be rushed back to hospital because she had an infection in her liver and that was something to do with the drain she had. There was a problem with the drain system because a little tube was broken and it leaked so what they did was they had to take it out and that was really scary for all of us and when our mum was in hospital we did everything we could to support her and the same time as at home and then sometime later during March our dad I told my brother and me that our nanny, his mum, was in hospital. And the problem is, we didn't go, me and Daniel, my brother, we didn't go and see nanny because we didn't know what was wrong with her. We didn't know exactly whereabouts in the hospital she was. Mainly because we were more concerned of our mum because she had liver cancer and we were mostly thinking of her and we we didn't go and see granddad either our nanny's husband because what were we supposed to do when our when our poor mum is on her last legs and not really able to do anything herself but we managed to have some good times with with mum well, when we went to go and see her we had the odd little game of Scrabble on her on her little um, tablet or iPad or whatever it was she had um, we, we, all, we all had we took some packed lunch to her we even brought her a, li a big Dumbo pillow and I bought her um, a little uh, pop vinyl Dumbo character And mum, mum really liked that. And then du during, during the time when I wanted to put all my plans on hold, like for example, um, the day out with Thomas event that was um, in, at Easter, I wasn't at all sure if if I wanted to go because because of my poor mum, and I was worried, what if mum, what if mum died, and I wasn't there to see it, and. But the others told me I should go because it would be something to help me take my mind off mum. But it did, but I just couldn't help but think of my poor mum. So then, then as the time went on, um, when two days after, well, two days, no, sorry, let me start that again. Um, Later on the twenty sixth, no, not the twenty sixth, the um twenty first of April, um, our dad had came to see us and asked, "Why have we not been to see Granddad?" And I've obviously told you this. He told us um we could we could go and take our our nanny, no, not our nanny, our Granddad up to see Nanny in hospital. She when we took our Granddad to see our nanny, she wasn't exactly in the best in the best of terms she was she was absolute, absolutely um, she was lying there just groaning um, she couldn't exactly open her eyes and see us um, she had a, a, can, a ligament cancer in her leg and we were told it could have been there for over a year and it would have been too late to do anything so that was the 22nd of April and then on the day of on the 23rd of April well, um, which was the day I uploaded Teresa Gallagher's birthday video um, I was I got out of bed about about quarter past nine in the morning and when when my brother told me me the bad news about Nanny um, I was out of bed for about 10 15 seconds and and uh, 
he told me our nanny, our dad's mum, passed away in hospital about quarter past four in the morning. And that was shocking. Because we only saw her that day, and that day was the last day we saw her. Because also on that day, I had planned to go up and see um, the um, Tugs exhibition at the Neen Valley Railway. But I couldn't bring myself to book tickets to go see it, or book train tickets, because I was more worried about my 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 mum. As, especially as when she was nah, literally out of it. She needed help going to the bathroom and back. Um, she was getting more disorientated. She was getting um, morphine injected into her so she couldn't feel the pain. She was, she was getting, she was getting very bad. And then, on the, on the twenty eighth of of April, Mum, I went to go and see Mum after work. So aim is um my sister Laura and Daniel and um, Daniel had time off work and so did Laura and um, we saw mum was like all she could do was just sleep sleep and sleep and she was like her brain was literally breathing through her body she was like making a lot of noises and it just so, it was so upsetting to hear, and I could and I remember my stepdad saying, "Come on, come on, please, don't give up. Just, just, I can't bring myself to say it." And then I left. Well, just before we left, about was it half past two, quarter to three, I think. Um, I saw mum lying in her bed snoring, and I said to her, "I just whispered goodbye, mum." And she, she wouldn't have heard me, but I broke down in tears. And then that e that evening, about just gone ten past quarter past seven, five hours later, we got we got a phone call from from Paul saying that Mum had passed away. Mum died at home in her sleep. I'm so I'm sorry, everyone. But I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> we went round to go and sit, see her. Laura and Dale got to go and sit in Mum upstairs before I did. And then when it was my turn, I noticed Mum's leg move and I thought, is she still alive? It turned out it wasn't. Her leg just fell because of her body weight. So we were literally all in tears. I had the Friday, I had the next day off work, just to get over what happened. And to be honest, I couldn't bring myself to think that Mum was gone. I just didn't want to believe it. I didn't want to accept that Mum was gone. I thought, no, that's that's not that's not fair. Because my Mum was only fifty six when she died. It went. What upset me most of all was that I never got a I never got a chance to tell Mum. Well, I did get to tell Mum how much I loved her, but there was so many but there was so many things Mum was going to miss out on this year. My brother's thirtieth birthday, my next birthday as was Laura's birthday, so. So the last few weeks have been have been really hard. I mum just get mum gave us um each a card, but we were only supposed to open it until after she died. So I just couldn't bring myself to open mine because I was so scared to see what was written in mine. I was literally so scared. I. I know Mum's in a better place now and she can't suffer, but I do miss my mum so much. The day of her funeral was that was really hard. 
I'm just gr I'm sorry. <laughs> so, just before before Mum died, Mum, I had I had sort of a dream which I won't go into, and that made and that made me think of Mum when I had the dream that when I had the dream, so my told Mum about it, and I broke down in tears. I remember it was a Tuesday afternoon, so in April, was it a couple of weeks before she died? I... So, we've had, we've had Mum's funeral, and we've had my nanny's funeral. Another few, another, another next... This is still very hard. It's still, it's still very, very hard, because... Because it just it still feels really weird that, that the woman who I loved, who has brought me up into this world, who looked after me, helps me so much, is no longer here. Because my mum, to me, was was a very important person. She was she was the most positive female influence I had while growing up. She was somebody I could look up to, talk to about anything, and. Now that she's no longer here, I just don't, I just don't know who else I can look up to, because without my mum, I I don't know who else I could turn to. But I've had so much help and support from my from my work colleagues, from my mum, not my my mum's friends, and my stepdad. My best friend, uh, Scott, has been that has helped me out, and so has everyone one on the um, Soda Island forum. Um, I I may have told a couple of people here on YouTube, and I've and I've to hope and I've um I had a nice little gift from Dan five five eight nine or Butter the Steamroller uh, or whatever he uploaded any videos for. For nearly seven weeks, because I just couldn't bring because after the death of my mum, I just couldn't bring myself to make any more videos because all my projects have been on hold. Um, I I just did get to go on that day out with Thomas event, which is on the bank holiday uh, back in May, hey, because it would help me take my mind off and. I'd say I'd say I did enjoy I did enjoy that day, but the saddest part was I wasn't going to be able to tell my mum how hot how how my day was because she wasn't going to be there f waiting for me. So I decided, well, no, I decided I just I just just to tell her, Lauren, Daniel, and and my stepdad how my day went. But there were some other bits my mum would, um, will now never get to see. I wanted to tell my mum about the Great Race movie, about the new Thunderbirds DVD I got from that Kickstarter project, and and I wanted to tell her about about my great news on on this um Z the Mouse project thing that I've been taking part in. Well. Like it's not easy now because she's not here. So, and then when me, Laura, and Daniel went to go and see our mum at the um at the funeral home, she was lying there in, the, in her actual coffin. And it was really hard to talk, and talk and say anything to her because what what on earth can you say when your own mother is lying there? I just couldn't bring myself to say anything because it just felt so it felt kind of spooky in there so I just I just feel like I, I need to say I had to get all this off my chest and tell you all what's been happening because I know some of you have probably been worried about where I was or what's been happening so I thought it would be best if I tell you now 
I don't know when I'll be uploading my next video. I really don't know. But I just want to say, for those who have supported me and helped me and been there for me, I really want to say a big thank you to them. Thank you for your kindness, for your support, and for helping me. And I just, I'm, I'm really appreciated. I'm, I'm, ha I'm. I'm be I am I am better. I am feeling better now because because now I know my mum's in a better place and she can't suffer. I know she'll still be watching me and the rest of my fa the rest of my family. Well, her side of the family. I'm gonna I'm gonna end it there now because I just I just don't know what else I could possibly say. This is this is Crane Productions twenty seven. I'm signing off. Bye.